Hey folks, this is another tutorial about ray marching in Jitter and today we're going to uh, see how to map multiple SDFs, multiple shapes, into a single ray marching scene. As I mentioned last time, I'm going to use the map function as a container for all of my objects and today in particular I want to see how they can coexist in the same ray marching shader and how to deal with the intersection of two objects. We're going to keep working with spheres for now. Of course, in the future, there will be more uh, kinds of shapes. I mentioned how the length function uh, minus a certain scalar uh, will give me a sphere. And the scalar in this case, uh, 0.8, is my radius. So the length of my ray um, pointing to the origin um, minus the radius gives me an SD, uh, SDF uh, of a sphere. In this case, I'm translating the point, the space to the origin, which is like not translating it. But if I do, for instance, uh, I shift it to the right, I can see how the sphere moves to the right. You can see here how I created another variable, uh, res, um, and this implies that I wanna do more than just one shape. I wanna have more than one object. So let's call this sphere one and let's uh, create another sphere. Sphere two, and we're gonna do length of P minus another position, vec three. Um, and we're gonna put this one to the left of the screen and let's give it a radius uh, that is slightly smaller just to make sure uh, they are distinct. But if I do sphere two, then um, I will have the other sphere drawn. Here I have my uh, Desmos uh, graph with, with um, let's say I have two spheres and one is in front of the other. So the min function is uh, gives me the minimum of the two distances. I'm gonna map the distance from my origin to the closest object in the space. In this case, it would be the black sphere, the black circle here. Um, and if I do the max function, I will map the one behind it because between these two, um, the, the object that is farther away is the red one. So in this case, the min function, the minimum function will give me the first object. The maximum function will give me the farthest, the, the object that is farther away. Remember that whenever uh, the first SDF, the black circle here, will give me a positive value when the distance hasn't reached the, the object and it will give me a negative value inside the object. If I say that the result is the minimum between sphere uh, two, sphere one and sphere two, then the result will be uh, the two spheres uh, linked together. The hit point will be the one that is closer to the viewer. Let's put it at the same uh, position of this of sphere one. So since it's smaller, we'll be inside. The smaller sphere has disappeared. If I do the max function, uh, then the bigger sphere will have um, will be closer, meaning that the distance will be uh, closer to the viewer and uh, the, the distance to the smaller sphere, sphere will be uh, bigger and therefore the max will return the distance to the, big, to the smaller sphere. When the hit point is hitting the big sphere but not hitting the smaller sphere, then still the max function will give me the um, will give me a large value for the smaller sphere and a, and a smaller value for the bigger sphere, uh, which will, uh, the larger value will be the one that it's returned by the max function. And therefore uh, the hit point will not be uh, given because of the conditions that I put in, the, in my intersect function. Uh, the, the distance that will be returned by the hit value will be more than the max dist uniform that I've given 
and therefore there will be no hit. In the case where uh, the two objects are overlapping, the farther away object will be drawn. But what if the two objects are um, not overlapping completely and they're intersecting at some point? Then the max function will give me the intersection between the two, meaning then meaning that where the two spheres are intersecting, then I will have a hit point. If they're not intersecting, then the object that it's not present in that point will give me the maximum distance and therefore there will be no hit point. We can have one sphere and then we can have the other sphere uh, carve um, its shape into um, the first sphere. How do we do that? The values that are inside the SDF are negative. We invert the sign of the second sphere I can see how the small sphere has carved itself into the larger sphere. So whenever I'm hitting the big sphere, um, the, the smaller sphere will be, the its, its value will be negative, uh, and therefore it will be uh, less than my sphere one, and the big sphere will be returned as a value. Whenever I'm um, inside the uh, bigger sphere, uh, its value will be negative, but at that point, the value of the small sphere will be positive uh, because I, I inverted the value of the, of the smaller sphere. And therefore, um, that, the hit position of the smaller sphere inside the big sphere will be the return value. Uh, and that's how you get um, the carving of one object into the other. The last function that I want to talk about is the smooth minimum. This is what it looks like with the smooth minimum implemented. You can see how the spheres, when the spheres are touching one another, they don't, there are no sharp edges. They actually are kind of blending into one another. And so let's just copy this and, uh, and see how we can work with it. So uh, let's use as min. And then we have sphere one, sphere two, and then we have to give it a, um, a smooth smoothing factor. Uh, so let's do, for instance, 0 0.1 and see how that works. And you can see now the small sphere is blended into the bigger sphere. Uh, let's do a little more, uh, a little less. Uh, you can see how if I decrease the smoothing factor, then the two shapes are more defined. Um, and now you can see how they are really, um, they are really kind of distinguishable, but there's still some smoothness to them, uh, and that's a very, uh, very useful when we we want to do hybrid shapes so now the 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 small sphere is going into the bigger sphere so now the small sphere is coming out of the bigger sphere and with a smooth value both sides this is uh, something that it's pretty unique to ray marching meaning um, when you're drawing things with polygons, doing the smoothness between two shapes is actually not very easy to do. Uh, while it's pretty easy to, to use with this, um, with this simple smin function, there is also a nest max function. We can uh, implement the carving that we looked at for, uh, with the max function, the carving of one object into the other uh, with the nest max function. And uh, let's invert the sign of the sphere, very important. And now we should see how the small sphere is carved into the bigger sphere. The carving happens between the two objects, uh, but it, it's a smooth carving. It's not, um, there are no edges to it.
In next episodes, I will uh, talk about how to uh, color these two objects in different ways. Uh, so we're going to talk about how can we identify which object I have hit uh, and then and therefore how to color them differently. And then I want to talk about uh, lighting, simple lighting for in ray marching. And so um, I'll uh, keep posting these and please uh, stay tuned, uh, like, subscribe, comment. And if you're interested in supporting my work, you can always go to my Patreon page. Until the next time, take care.